podcast from Kuala Mike is I think it's really cool and um that is what I wanted to say. Thomas Jefferson was an impressive man. He was intelligent, confident, and full of fanciful intentions. And then he wasn't. For someone to push for Virginia to introduce anti-slavery laws and at the same time have hundreds of slaves himself makes me wonder exactly what kind of beast he was. There is very little by way of principle that can allow for the interlacing of two such contrary positions to be held within a single breast. And yet, here we have Jefferson. Jefferson was a contradiction, a hypocrite. Highlighting the hypocrisy, and highlighting that this is completely unacceptable under the circumstances described, is how society can ensure these things do not happen again. With Aidan, we talk about the founding father found wanting, the Louisiana Purchase, the Barbary War Take One, and the Embargo Shoot Off Your Own Foot Act of 1807. It's a wild ride, as always, with Aidan, and thoroughly informative and wonderfully entertaining. Thanks again, Aidan. Enjoy. Aidan, you're here again. What a surprise. How are you? Good. I, I just keep happening to show up and I don't know how that happens, but here I am. So I'm just yeah. ha- happy to be here. How about you, Zach? I, yeah, I'm I'm happy to be here too. Um, and uh, yeah, other than the fact that I live here, but I mean, as in together in this virtual space that we're occupying uh, yeah. together, let me throw my phone to the other side of the room so that it doesn't <laughs> vibrate in my head. Um, yeah, today we're talking... so. We came from last week's discussion about or last time's discussion about Robert Walpole, number one, Prime Minister number one in the UK. Now we're going to talk about uh, President number three. And this is a guy you've really looked forward to talking about, right? Yeah, Uh, just because he is such an interesting character. Like, I mean, I did really enjoy Hamilton when it came out. Um, It was something that I remember like being super into and i remember it really struck like a passion with me for history again like i've always had a passion for history but i don't know there's something about like the musical thing that i was like this is awesome um and then like learning more about thomas jefferson the older that i've gotten and like i mean hamilton happened when i was like 15 or 16 so i remember that happening but i still wasn't in the same spot that i'm in now um and the way that thomas jefferson is portrayed in in hamilton is a really interesting point of view and it's a really different way to look at him because it's i mean you're not looking at him in in his perspective and you're looking at him from his rival's perspective of alexander hamilton like these two people have been rivals for so long um and so yeah like getting into the research of this guy and remembering like just a lot of the things that people have talked about with him and um specifically sally hemmings like i'm excited to talk about her and i'm excited to talk about um a lot of the weird hypocrisy that happens with jefferson that i feel as though is just there's a point where it reaches that it's just inexcusable like it just gets to a a certain point for me where I'm like, you've said this stuff so much, like you've condemned slavery so much. How come like you've had like 600 slaves dog? Like there's a certain point where it's like, okay, do you actually though? Like, so I don't know. It was a weird, uh, research to go down, especially because he is like the, he's the president who owned the most slaves out of any president that we've had. Um, And he is an interesting guy like his I mean, his gravestone says like um, 
author of Declaration of Independence, um, governor of Virginia, and one other thing, but it doesn't ever say that he was president. It doesn't say, oh, and it says that he was a father of that university. Um, but it doesn't say that he was president. It doesn't say like that he was vice president. It doesn't talk about a lot of those things. Um, I thought that it was like this dude just seems very like, I don't know, like he he feels as though he's just saying the things to feel like he like everybody's going to be supportive of him, like just to get everybody supportive of him. But he's still doing all the bad things. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I felt also, I mean, obviously, you know, just to let people know, we don't have a reading list, which we then go through together. It's, um, you know, Aiden is completely free to go do whatever research that you want to do, Aiden. Um, and I go away and do my thing. And yeah. it's it's uh, very likely that, that we will consult completely different uh, texts and different um, uh, sort of re research methodologies and we'll see things from very different perspectives. So therefore, mm. it's, you know, there isn't necessarily a timeline which we will both be able to adhere to um, uh, in, in the course of our discussion. However, there are clearly ideas and perceptions of Jefferson, which are consistent. And I yeah. think I didn't necessarily read this, but I, I also have to agree with you. It is possible to consider Jefferson through the contradictions of his life. You know, on the one hand, the, the person who authored this uh, you know fabulous document which talked about rights and freedoms and so on. Um, but at the same time, he willfully contributed in the effort to withhold those rights and freedoms from a sub substantial number of people. Oh. Again, also in Virginia, he he put forward um, anti-slavery uh, sort of laws that he mm. wanted to have enacted, but those laws were rejected at the time. Um, but again, even though he wanted to remove those elements from life in Virginia, he didn't start that initiative himself. Yeah. So again, it refers back to exactly what you were saying. You know, there is a lot of hypocrisy with this guy. Yeah, like a lot of this, like the his earliest like uh, advocation for condemning slavery was just a co-sponsorship. Like it wasn't that he like co-authored it or that he helped write it. It was just a co-sponsorship. It was just like him being like, yeah, no, for sure. And so like that kind of speaks to what I feel as though is a lot of Thomas Jefferson. Like, yeah, he's a good writer, but he also spent a lot of his time like taking from a lot of other writers, like other great writers from the past. And and so, I mean, like my mom and I were chatting about it yesterday and we were like, well, like we have to think about how limited their libraries are. Like these are people who do have a limited range of like books and education and they're in the colonies so there isn't all these immense like books and whatnot but at the same time i'm like sitting here and i'm like but thomas jefferson is at the upper echelon of society he is married into virginia's like like he married like his wife martha was one of the wealthiest families in virginia at the time like she like his her family was super fucking rich and they had a lot of slaves like a lot of Thomas Jefferson's slaves came from his wife after her father's death and 5,000 acres of land as well. And like with all that land, what are you going to do with it? Well, I need more slaves to keep it like functioning. And so that's what Thomas Jefferson does and that he continues to do it. Like even during his time when he goes out to France, he ends up leasing out his slaves to other white people, which I was like – Oh, yeah. So you really don't give a fuck like you're just making extra money on the side. You're going out like you don't care about freedom. You're fucking leasing them out in the 1790s, dude. Like there's no excuses for this stuff anymore. Like you can you can say all men are free. All men are created equal. But if you're going to continue to perpetuate all these problems and only freeing like 10 of your 600 slaves that you own, like. No, man, there's you, there's no pass for that. There's no pass for that. You can't be like, yeah, 100 percent. Slavery is so horrible. Peep out my 200 plus slaves working in my fields. Like one of the arguments I saw was people being like, well, he knew the conditions for slaves would be worse because blah, blah, blah. And so that's why he kept them with him, because he knew that he could treat them better. And then I kept reading like 
all these stories of like slaves who specifically male slaves who would end up saving money like they would sell charcoal on the side and they would try to buy their freedom and they would and there was a story of a dude who tried to buy his freedom and he like got uh like a son of one of his masters to forge him a document and he couldn't read so he didn't know that the document was fake and so he walked all the way to like dc like 100 miles from dc and he gets stopped by a police officer and the police officer reads this note and there he can't read it because it's like the boy who read it wrote it for him also didn't know how to read and so he was sent back to uh, monticello and he did it one more time and then thomas jefferson flogged him in front of his entire group of friends and then fucking sold him like these aren't excusable actions you know like this is all just shit that's like yeah i condemn slavery no you fucking don't dude like you're going you're just a problem you're just a problem yeah and th this is also a a big part of the the hypocrisy because on on the on the other hand um he isn't one of those individuals who has no access to education in fact um he is taken under the wing i think of one of uh the, the first professors of law um i think if we talk about george wythe um yeah. we're talking about somebody who had access to all of the sort of books regarding um parliamentary sessions um in the united kingdom they had access to all of this material they could read to their heart's content somebody who was um, inspired by john locke um, and so on so as in a well-read uh, very intelligent student that was thomas jefferson yeah and yet he behaved in this um inconsistent i think is the, the most ex extreme positive term that yeah we could say for him yeah it's just like i don't know you're he's very back and forth and it's it's a bit confusing to be reading all these things and to be like Okay, so I understand that you do condemn slavery and that you don't think that it's a good thing. But here we go again. Like, and so that's where I just get into these spots where I'm like, I just don't really know how to feel about this. You know what I mean? Like, it's it gets to a certain point where I'm just like, you have done all this shit. I understand what you're saying, but it's one of those cases where it's like, I guess actions really do speak louder than words, dude. Like... I don't know. It it was it's weird, man. Like, and I mean, Thomas Jefferson really was a well well read guy. I mean, he fucking donated his his uh or like sold his library, which was this like the baseline of the Library of Congress after uh the War of 1812. Like, this is a well well read man, a dude who has lots of money, lots of goods when he's in um when he's in France, when he's the the U.S. minister for uh, for France, he's sending books and goods back from Europe back to his home in Monticello. So, like, it's not like he's lacking of goods and it's not like he's lacking of well-read materials. Like, he's got access to everything. Like, he should know better at this point, you know? Like, no, Absolutely. Yeah. And he has he has benefited from every opportunity, um, a young, intelligent man with privilege uh, could possibly have hoped to have um, starting off in life so no, absolutely i'm i could hit it with you I, I have a feeling we're gonna go um for the next um, i don't know how many presidents and prime ministers they are all going to be tainted by the the slavery brush yeah um and uh yeah rightly so i'm not even gonna apologize for it yeah but anyway, we'll <laughs> i'm thinking like i'm like and rightly so like it should be like fucking bright red man like just oh my god like and it shouldn't be a pass like it shouldn't be like yeah well everybody was doing it like i think that we mentioned that last time we were chatting was just like this shouldn't be a pass it shouldn't be like yeah we're fine with this because everybody else was doing it this should just be one of those things that we look back on and we go yeah no fuck that that's a horrible thing for you to do and we're gonna merit you lower because of it like it's going to play a big part in your how how we rate you, you know, like yeah. and how people yeah. feel about you. 
Absolutely. I mean, for example, in about 20 or 30 years time, uh, Republicans can look back at the, you know, the way that they responded to the attack on the Pelosi's and they can say, yeah, but everybody was making jokes about hammers um, yeah. and uh, yeah, sort of secret yeah. rendezvous in the night. But you think, well, do you know what? But OK, but that's not really the mature way of conducting politics, is it? So therefore, let's sort of try to you know calm things down a bit one week or so before the midterms. Yeah. Um, but apparently that's not the way things go, right? So. Yeah, what I hear is that everybody in America is getting hit with hammers, so better keep my eyes out. That's what Fox News is spreading. What the fuck? Don't see yeah, anybody it's... fucking walking around like being like, give me your money with a hammer. Or like, just walking around hitting people with hammers. Like, it's such a weird fucking... Ah, fake news. Fake news. Love it. Yeah, there is a certain level of irresponsibility being uh, pushed by certain sides. And yeah, I know yeah. people who listen to this show will say, oh, you guys are so woke and I don't know what. Um, <laughs> I mean, woke has got nothing to do with it. This is simply a question of decency. Yeah, yeah. As in, if I'm sitting with somebody whose political ideas do not necessarily uh, entwine so you know divinely with my thoughts, that doesn't mean I hate the person. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can respect somebody else's opinions if they're different to mine. I don't have to label them anything. I don't have to be insulting towards them. Um, but it seems as though in politics, and it's the same thing in the UK too, um, we have to hate one another. And a yeah. part of that process began with Mr. Jefferson here, I believe. Yeah. It feels, yeah, there's a lot of like, I mean, we talked about it last time with Warpool with the... Uh, like the printing and the media of seeing like here's that divide happening like the wigs and the and the oh, Tories shoot, Tories yeah I was like Terries who are they <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Terriers they the can terriers. be quite yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but they like starting to see that divide and and here again like with Thomas Jefferson and uh, Hamilton Adams Washington like. Federalists versus anti-federalists, we're seeing these part like the party split, you know, we're seeing the divide. And with the transition of power between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson is also the first transition of power between the two parties in American history. And I mean, American history is pretty young at this point. It's only been around for 12 years, but still it's something to take note of. It's like, hey, we did pass the torch off to somebody without there being the all these problems about it. Because what's crazy is that in 2021, we saw there were problems between the shift of parties. Like, you don't think that it would be this crazy, but it it is a problem, though. Like, and they handled it just fine way back then. So what the fuck are we doing now? It's just weird, man. So, like, you do see the, that divide, but in a weird way, you also kind of see, like... I don't know. I loved the that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams by the end of their like they both die on the same day, like very close together. Thomas Jefferson dies a few hours before John Adams. And I think on the John Adams episode, we even said that John Adams, last words were Thomas Jefferson survives and Thomas Jefferson died a few hours beforehand. But I just like there's something beautiful about the two like these two founders who were so opposed to one another by the end of their time kind of coming together and having this weird, cherished friendship um, and also dying at the same time, like same day, 4th of July, 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. It's just one of those things that I'm like, wow, that is fucking weird, man. Like that doesn't that's bizarre. Like who planned that out? Hmm. Mm. There's some Aaron Burr's like sitting around like blowing like poison darts or something i don't fucking know i love the uh aaron burr conspiracy for jefferson's like second term like that's a weird i don't know didn't fucking didn't fucking think that was a thing that was fucking weird but we'll talk more about that in a bit because god i'm all over the place today <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's all right i mean it's i mean we will approach this with uh, as we have done um and we will address what we've picked up as being some of the main talking points yeah um so all right so thomas jefferson um two-term president um from 1801 to 1809 um there are a few things to talk about with as, a, as you've already begun you've talked about some of the privilege and, and we've spoken about the education mm -hmm. um he 
We've already spoken how he basically undermined John Adams. Adams was very much pro sort of as a monarchist. Jefferson um, is, uh, 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 believes in republics. Mm -hmm. um, and this really formulates uh, some of the ideological differences that existed between the two at the time. And so Jefferson, therefore, as you have said, contributes greatly to the split um, of the Federalist Party. And he's actually um, the first democratic republican president yeah which is a really strange thing in our modern politics isn't it agreed when i read it i was just kind of like the fuck does that mean what does that mean <laughs> what is what is that <laughs> like what a weird fucking so are you just a moderate like are you in the middle but like i don't know yeah go ahead yeah, no, no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to take that, uh, that, that line sort of with him because, yeah. um, yeah, he wanted, he didn't feel that the, the approach of having a, an individual person who centralized authority was the way to go. Yeah, he very much wanted to ensure that the there was a a republic which allowed for power to be um, sort of distributed. Uh, among more sort of localized elements. Yeah. And, and this was something which was quite important to him. And this kind of came through with um, the Constitution, which was yeah. then enacted. He was very much like, I mean, falling into that uh, anti-federalist category of just like wanting state rights, wanting to maintain that, like, which is something that, like, I'm thankful for the level of, like, balance that there is in the country of between like a, a government that like a national government that does take role but also a local government that t takes more like local shit because it makes sense like when you look at the grand scheme of things it doesn't make sense to have people in washington doing shit for people who live all the way in like oregon or california like you live on two completely different ends of the of the the state or like of the country you know so like there's a lot of things that i do agree with that Jefferson like puts into place that he helps like kind of enact through his time and presidency like really establishing st like states rights not establishing an overarching powerful government that is just going to be like psh, 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 like very much kind of taking a step back with it and uh I mean seeing how George Washington and Adams kind of do play more into this. We have this big government. We need to do things with it. Like they're also very early on. So they're trying to establish things. Um, but Jefferson definitely is taking more of that back back step. He's taking more of the each state should be doing their own things. And he's like in his first term of presidency, he's very focused on the expansion of the United States. I mean, he purchases Louisiana purchase and Jesus Christ, dog, that is an unbelievable amount of land that is going to lead to a lot of problems that I'm unbelievably excited to talk about. But like five or holy cow, I remember writing it down because it was just an unbelievable fucking amount of land. Well, it more Eight, than doubled the size of the United States at the time. So yeah, yeah it eight hundred and twenty eight thousand square miles. Uh, that's a lot of fucking land. Yeah, more than doubling the U.S. and also, at this point, pushing forward the idea that Americans at, will have the ability to just kind of keep going, you know, like this is going to push forward the uh, manifest destiny. Like we're going to see manifest destiny because of this. Um, and this is also going to lead to the removal of Indians and the horrible treatment of them. And that's all stuff that I'm also really excited to talk about in terms of how our presidents have treated the Indians and the or the native americans holy cow I've, I've been reading so many historical things that i'm like fuck dude i just made like the biggest slip up so i apologize um native americans like how they've been treated throughout american history and by our presidents like this mm -hmm. is going to heavily motivate like that that just perpetuates that movement you know like it's just now we're doing it baby mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. I mean, this the the Louisiana Purchase I think came about later on, if I'm not mistaken. This is sort of one of the uh, one of the sort of last things that he essentially accomplished. But um, this is one of the contradictions um, with regards to Jefferson, because 
he wasn't sure that he had the the right as the president to make that purchasing decision of his own accord. So he, yeah. he wanted to actually consult with Congress to be able to confirm that this was the case. And some people said, no, 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 it's OK. This is completely within the Constitution that we've drawn up and so on. It's not a Fine problem. With it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, that that's uh, apparently this was a very controversial decision back then. But I guess now people would say, no, man, we needed that. But um, yeah, at the time, um, the North wasn't willing to expand the uh, the United States territories to areas which were even further away from their idea with regards to the slave trade. So th this yeah. is one of the main issues. They didn't want that to um, because it would also weaken their power base because they would have to share with a greater number of different uh, electors. Yeah. Um, so, again, you know, everything is very much self-centered. Um, yeah. And but yeah, we'll talk about this perhaps a little bit later. But yeah, go. On. Yeah, there's like <laughs> with the Louisiana Purchase, there's like this give and take to it, you know, like like you're saying, like there's something to consider with. Yeah, we're going to have more states, which means that there are going to be more people in Congress. There's going to be more votes distributed. There are going to be more like all this changes like this changes the U.S. from here on out. Like it's been the 13 colonies post louisiana purchase the united states just keeps getting bigger like and it just keeps expanding like from here on out we're not going to be talking about 13 colonies anymore we're going to be talking about the development of new states playing uh like a, a role in some of the things that future presidents have to deal with because there are going to be huge problems with that expansion like i mean the spanish american war is going to happen eventually like and i mean i just learned recently that the term gringo comes from uh which is what uh mexicans usually call americans it comes from americans during the spanish american war wore green coats and they would tell green coats to go home and so it comes from gringo 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 and i was like whoa that's fucking awesome what a fucking <laughs> crazy little history tidbit wow this world is awesome yeah <laughs> learn that from call of duty baby <laughs> Like, what the fuck? But such a, like, we are going to see these big things play a role in the future. And I'm really excited to, like, that this is the, like, this is the big point that is, like, Thomas Jefferson's presidency in some ways is bigger than George Washington's because it's like, all right, baby, the U.S. is going full fucking U.S. mode and it's about to happen. Like, this, he's, he's making it happen, you know, and with that purchase he's also funding napoleon napoleon's war in france like fuck man that's like that should i feel like in some way that also plays a role into my like rating for that you know like ooh, oh yeah, hmm. mm. but yeah no um there are a number of things we're gonna have to unfortunately skate over with regards yeah. to jefferson because i mean um there's just simply so much to to, to entertain and I, I do feel that people who really want to get into more detail with jefferson should go ahead and do the research um you know to their heart's content yeah um, especially trying to sort of ascertain the the inspirations behind some of his uh declarations later on the reference that you made also to the uh, Native Americans, even though it's something which comes perhaps later with regards to the Louisiana Purchase, but you know, just to sort of come back to some of the uh, statements or writings that occurred before Jefferson. So, for example, uh, George Washington, with regards to his wishes for the Native Americans, who he at the time also, as you state, um, considered to be Indians. Um, he said that if the U.S. government wanted peace with the Indians, it must behave peacefully. If the U.S. wanted raids by Indians to stop, raids by American frontier inhabitants must also stop. That's a wise fucking man right there. Like, that does, that, like, once again, we did talk about that quite a bit with Je with uh, Washington, but just how well spoken and how well written he was. Yeah, and I think as we go through the list of presidents, we're going to talk more and more about some of the actions that were undertaken uh, by the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. With regards to Jefferson, this is another one of these elements which we have to really look at and say, do you know what? I, I don't like that. Yeah. Um, 
when when he wrote about policy towards um, the Native Americans, he was ambivalent. He didn't give a shit um, with regards to assimilation, and he quite happily used words such as exterminate with regards mm. to the tribes who resisted American expansion or indeed manifest destiny. Um, he didn't care about those uh, Native American tribes who wanted to fight for their lands, even though he himself was so willing to fight for the land which he occupied. Yeah. But he didn't want to allow others uh, the same respect or the same uh, understanding. Um, and also, just quickly, um, in a letter he wrote to William Henry Harrison in 1803, should any tribe be foolhardy enough to take up the hatchet at any time, the seizing the whole country of that tribe and driving them across the Mississippi as the only condition of peace would be an example to others and a furtherance of our final consolidation. Damn. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, on the one hand, we talk about uh, freedom and so on. And then, yeah. Yeah. No. Just another one of those places where I'm like, yeah, no, fuck you, man. Like, how can you speak about so much freedom for people when you're also being like. I don't know, they with so little care for humans, you know, like for people who have been here since before you who helped your people understand the land like you have we have no right to be here like even now in the in america where i'm at there we i have no right to be here like this isn't my fucking land like we this is all stolen property you know like and to have that mindset of just like yeah fuck them like take them out my last like our last consolidation is gonna be fucking <laughs> like a fucking right hand hook to the jaw kind of thing like he doesn't give a fuck he's just there to continue american expansion like it he's very self focused in in his goals to continue the things that he wants to do and it's something that we've seen with a lot of these presidents if not all of them so far is just that they are very much in these positions to continue their goals for whatever reason you know and so in this case he's just like yeah, American expansion. We're going to just keep growing. I don't give a fuck what the consequences are. Like, and I don't care if I have to fight for it, too. Like, meanwhile, these people who are just defending their lands are having to fight against, like, armies of people who are way more equipped than they are. Like, this is still so early on for them that they, like, Native Americans don't have firearms to the same degree that, you know the entire u.s army does at this point like we are establishing an army we're establishing like militias in in, the, in our states like there there are people who have way more guns in the u.s than ha native americans had like even back then and so it was just not a fair fight you know like there's nothing that you can do between like a bow and arrow and a musket like the com like the comparison is so far apart like you're on different battlefields you know and so it's such a horrible situation to just watch all this murder happen and to just like be like yep and all now we have this land and all these people have been pushed and further on we'll see like i mean re-education camps for native americans for them to like be like assimilated into american culture and just what a fucking horrible thing that is and how many people are still traumatized by those schools like I mean, from here on out, like I said, this is going like we're just going to continue to watch this horrible treatment of people like it's not just like just in the name of being like America, you know, like America focused and expansion and and freedom, like freedom for me, not for you, though, because you're on my land. Like what the fuck? What the fuck does that mean? You know, it's so horrible. Yeah, I mean, this is the one one part of the history of prime ministers that doesn't come up because the, um, you know, they appeared as in, we started with Walpole in 1721 and so the, the 
Britain, as it were, as a concept of government had existed for, you know, at least by that time, a thousand years. Um, and so therefore, what, not necessarily Britain, 900 years, I'd say. Um, however, the overlap is what happened with the slave trade. So there is this overlap with the way that they um, they treated the the slaves that they stole from one place and took to another and made profit yeah. upon them, you know from the sale. However, there wasn't that same history with regards to creating a state, as it were, that the United States government had to do. So therefore, yeah, you know, this story is is you know it's very easy for for me at least to look back and say, oh man, that screwed up. But later on, when we come to criticise uh, Britain for the the shit that it did. Um, with the East India Company and in other parts of the world, uh, uh, we're going to have lots to say about those particular policies. Yeah. But here, what happened to the Native Americans, um, yeah, as you so emotionally put it, was horrific. It was from the after Washington, it was not only misguided, um, it was horrendous, it's unjustifiable and something which continued unbelievably for such a long time and even today i think there is there is you know in the language of how um you know local government is operated there is still inherent discrimination against um native american tribes absolutely um, and it's yeah detestable to say the least i think yeah it's heartbreaking you know like i mean their their culture and their entire lifestyle has been lost um not having much of a, a a written language um like not or like not even really like writing a lot of documents down like the native americans were known for doing a lot of oral giving and once you kill off enough oral givers there is no story to fucking tell and that was that was the goal of america at the time was to make it so that way there is no story to tell so that way like God, the idea of it is fucking horrible. Like, you're telling these people that whatever happened to you didn't happen kind of thing. You're going – you've got to go to this school where you're going to learn that America is really awesome and that you have to just live with it. And these are the people who fucking murdered your family, pushed you out of your home, took your entire culture, your heritage, everything about who you were has been pushed, moved without care – and now the country is just like, yeah, no, c come on into the, our school. You have to learn everything our way, learn English. And if you don't, then you're a fucking savage. Like, that's what they're called historically. Like, Native Americans through for a long time have been called savages. And just for f for their own culture, for their own being. And what a horrible fucking thing that is to be like, no, because I'm like this, you are also have to be like that you cannot have your culture you can't have your religion you can't have, like religious freedom is something that's such a baseline here in the u.s and that lack of understanding of their religious freedom is like oh my god dude like just fucking what a horrible country we are like it's horrible it's horrible <laughs> But this this is something which we have maintained, uh, and I say we, and I'm I'm talking about our society, our governance structure has maintained since then until now. We still have the same approach, even though there are perhaps more people you would consider progressive, enlightened, woke. Um, you know, we have exclusive immigration policies. Our countries do not simply welcome anybody who wants to turn up and say, hey come welcome yeah let's talk about things no um people who tend to approach our shores with somewhat darker skin with a, a somewhat alternative perhaps uh, complexion of any sort um are immediately confronted by um uh, awkwardness perhaps in the very yeah. best um, or outright uh, enmity, perhaps, or hatred on, on, in other circumstances. And there are examples even you know, up until today that we can talk about quite clearly in the UK and in the US and even yeah. in Europe from, from some of the policies that we want to introduce with regards to Frontex here too. Um, it's more than distasteful. 
it, it's horrible and heartbreaking that this is something that continues on today like especially with our treatment of people from the middle east in particular like especially as a u.s citizen knowing how we treat them overseas and how we also treat them here in america like what an unwelcoming thing it must be like you come to america imagining that this is where you can like even now like i mean we've pushed everybody who was here out so now if you want to come to america now we get to discriminate you for that if like if you're looking to come here for any kind of opportunity you're met with discrimination you're met with hate you're met with like get out of my country kind of shit and it's like what the fuck does that mean like are you like people who say that genuinely are you american like do you understand what it is to be an american like we're all immigrants we're all from different places we're like we're all a culmination of different people from different cultures from different places I don't understand why you can't just be like, yes, please come into our country that was just like built for this. Like and now we're now we're at a place where like, yeah, no, fuck you. Get out of my country. Stay out of my country. Like it's been like that for a while now. But like what a fucking horrible thing to be doing for a country that claims freedom, claims democracy, claims a new life for anybody like this is way far in the future from where we are with Thomas Jefferson, but it's still worth noting that this is the baseline for that discrimination. This is the baseline for, like, from here on out, like, this is it. Like, this is people of color being discriminated against, and, like, American – America doesn't exactly have, like, the same colonialization, like – type thing going on but that's because america is massive and america during a lot of colonialization is doing like their western expansion they're they're basically just doing colonialization of their giant continent you know like it's and just with one group of people and so like like you mentioned with britain they're going to do a lot more later on um and they're going to treat native people horribly as well but it's just in a different circumstance and they're in different like situations where it's not like britain is like yeah we're gonna live here forever like they're a lot like we're kind of just using you guys to export goods and to make more money like it's weird man like it's it's they're very different stories but they're so deeply intertwined um and so yeah. deeply connected to today yep yep um yeah, as we talked about the Louisiana Purchase, which is one of the last things that I had on my list to talk about. So we've done, we've done that already, more or less. We'll talk more about it when we discuss future presidents, I think, because yeah. um, the exactly what that uh, involved with regards to the development of, of the United States really came into its own a bit later on in the story. So this will be really interesting to continue that that particular story with the next president who comes up. But oh, yeah. um, the first Barbary War. Um, so just quickly to to talk about this then. So um, this relates to pirates off the Barbary coast in North Africa. Um, this uh, this first Barbary War took place between 1801 and 1805. Uh, there was a second one, but that happened in 1815. So that doesn't necessarily reflect upon what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. However, um, previously, while America was the colonial territory of the Brits, the British Navy basically protected um, American merchant ships. However, as the United States had declared its own independence, it no longer had that protection. Yeah. And so this is the first big challenge to Jefferson because also he initially wanted to reduce the size of the U.S. Navy. He did so. But then he was like, oh, shit, I need yeah. to, we need to build up again, don't we? We've got pirates on these seas, boys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fuck like I loved hearing like. I watched a couple of documentaries, uh, like just last night, just like for refreshers. Um, and I just loved hearing all the like pirate shit. Like I loved hearing that, like that, that was such a struggle for him. I thought that I genuinely did not know that that was something that he had to deal with. Um, and in a crazy way, like later on his, res like 
one of the ways that he kind of gets around like having these ships like these american ships going back and forth between africa and america is i mean well he stops the like there's prohibition on slave trade between africa and america which makes it so that way there cannot be more slaves coming into america um and that's kind of a big move on jefferson's end which uh we'll talk about later on with his like i think that happens in his second term but like the like i mean you drop down the the navy and then you're getting attacked by pirates immediately afterward you gotta fucking pick it up dog and so america's starting to get all these like see, like this is a time where america's having sea problems as well like thomas jefferson's presidency is not well known for foreign policy like you know like he he's got a lot of problems going on with overseas particularly um but yeah <laughs> yeah indeed so the uh, just to then uh, highlight then so the the ruler of tripoli the pasha is uh, he was known yusuf karamanli um he wanted the united states to pay a tribute of two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars um and then declared war on the u.s and uh jefferson said <laughs> screw you um <laughs> bombarded tripoli and then the pasha surrendered and signed a peace treaty um so this was basically the the first i suppose you could say naval success um of uh, jefferson's uh, at least reign yeah. um but this was the starting of the reputation of the u.s to really bad actually you know we're not so weak guys we are a force to be reckoned with here yeah this is definitely like the baseline of like we're not here to fuck around guys like we 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 are like a group of like ragtime people you know but it's a lot of people who for one reason or another are willing to fight for whatever they've got you know like and so yeah i mean from I mean, we still see it today. America is a force to be reckoned with in terms of military might. Like, you don't want to fuck with America. We've got it all, homie. Like, and half the shit that you see is, like, is half the shit that you've seen. I'm sure that there's a bunch of random shit somewhere that we've never fucking seen, that nobody has seen that the military is working on, that I'm, like, trembling in my boots about genuinely. Like, I don't want to think about World War Three, but I will think about this. Because this happened in the past, and everything is kind of okay. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but, like, you do see this huge, like, response. I mean, it, and it works. I mean, he gets a peace treaty out of it. And, I mean, everybody at this point kind of knows that, hey, yeah, we are a fresh country, but we're not... We're not going to be weak. Like, we're not a weak country. We're, f like, we're fresh, but we're still here to fuck around, and we're still here to like fuck your shit up if you want to fuck with us and sometimes like sometimes there's something about that quality and something that i do have to respect but at the same time in this case i'm just like fuck but it's america <laughs> yeah as i sort of intimated earlier so we've got different uh timelines that we've perhaps uh researched so for, for me i had kind of like focused on three major events should we say policy events which occurred during uh jefferson's time so the first one was we was the Barbary War. We've already discussed the Louisiana Purchase, which came um, much later from what I was uh, considering. But th then the other main issue which I have, and this is slightly neglecting some of the, the personal issues, which we're also going to touch upon. The Embargo Act of 1807, this is in his second term. Um, and this is also in some ways related to uh, the, the Barbary War in a sense, but slightly different because here the America of the US Navy is being attacked by uh, British and French, was it? Or just British? Uh, ships from what here. I saw, it was m mostly British ships. Yeah, okay. In that case, yeah, sorry. So they're being attacked by the British Royal Navy. Um, because they want to take or they justified the attacks by saying we're taking back our sailors who had apparently been uh, sailing with uh, the U.S. Navy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's this was their justification. And apparently the issue came to a head in 1807 when a ship called the HMS Leopard 
uh, fired on the Chesapeake off the coast of Norfolk, Virginia. And so Jefferson then responded by signing an embargo act which prohibited American ships from leaving their ports until Britain and France stopped seizing. So France had also seized some ships, but not to the extent that the Brits had done. Um, So apparently the logic behind this was to cut off trade, which would hurt the economies of Britain and France. Uh, However, what he actually did do was uh, kicked himself uh, in the testicles, if that's even physically possible. Maybe he asked one of his friends to do it for him. He probably Um, asked uh, James Madison to help him out. I think he'd probably been a willing participant in that. But apparently uh, American business activity declined by a shocking 75% in the year following the Embargo Act. Yep, that completely bit him on the ass. Um, I have no, like, I can kind of see the logic behind it of like, yeah, you guys had all this investment to to these colonies and you have all these goods and shit. But at the same time, like, Britain and France have their own shit going on. They don't, like, they, at this point, they really don't give a fuck. Like, they're making, like, they're doing fine. They've got trade going on with all these other places. Europe is very close together. They're able to make these trade routes. Like, they're doing okay for themselves. And this just drops the U.S. economy horribly. Like, (laughs) this just plummets everybody. And this makes everybody pretty upset with, uh, with Jefferson. Yeah. He, if I'm not mistaken, he resigns, doesn't he? Um... Well, he, let's just say he's not re-elected. Uh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> at, at least there is this. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't believe that there is this principle of um, only two terms. Then I think that uh, that was set in law later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he definitely doesn't continue after um, 1809. In fact, when he is replaced um, by James Madison. But again, we'll talk about Madison. Uh, at a later stage it's i still find it interesting obviously that um as tigerish as jefferson was in the pursuit of his goals through military objectives or through violence when it came down to economic and sort of trade strategy he wasn't particularly well versed it seems yeah it's like one of those cases where I feel like you really should be depending on your cabinet more um, in terms of how you're handling these situations with foreign affairs. Um, George Washington knew how to do this really well. He was always really good at, like, he didn't always know what to do, so he had people who could handle situations for him. He knew how to how to do that. And Je- it feels like Jefferson in a lot of these situations just kind of tried to do it on his own. Like, he very much, like... There were times where he did consult Congress, like with the Louisiana Purchase, it was something that he consolidated Congress with. But a lot of the time, Jefferson is very much just like, I'm doing these things. It's me doing these things. Um, And with like the Embargo Act, like it bites him on the ass. Like it's something that really kicks him in the teeth and makes it so that way a re-election is probably not going to happen which is probably why he's like yeah no i'm not going to run again like he's pretty well fucked this um and at least he knows it but it's just one of those things where it's just like jesus christ you just like this this we have it's been set up to have your cabinet be a group of people that you depend upon that you work with very closely and if you just like work with it man work with it dog like why why not Like, I know you were super tight with James Madison, but, like, you need those foreign affairs. Like, at this point, America is so early on, and we did have, like, Jefferson – or not Jefferson. Adams and Washington both really were trying to be delicate with foreign affairs. And, like, I understand Jefferson trying to be light with it, with just doing, like, an embargo. But at the same time, it just – it just didn't work. It just didn't work, man. So as soon as it didn't work, he probably just should have fucking stopped. You know, like it shouldn't have been there. Like, and yeah, I mean, I don't really know how I'd respond to a situation like that, frankly. Um, but I also don't have to deal with situations like that. So I'm not the president. 
<laughs> no, you're not. Yeah. But you're you're definitely my um, source of raw emotion and passion <laughs> when it comes to talking about presidents. Um, one, there are two people sort of I'd like to talk about. So the, the second, I don't really know much about um, other than the fact that he, Jupiter Evans, was a, a friend, a person of color um, of uh, Jefferson. And when he died, Jefferson apparently um, had to go away for five months because this is somebody who grew up with him. They were very close friends somehow. Um, uh, but I, I, there, there, there wasn't much research that I was able to do about Jupiter Evans. Um, I, however, yes, tell me if you know, please. I, I heard that Jupiter Evans was like Je Jefferson's close friend when he was a boy, um, like <clears throat> with their family already owning slaves at the time like his he inherited around 50 slaves from his father if i'm not mistaken um when he passed away at 14 jupiter evans was like a lot of the time and during this time slaves and their children would be very close to the families like they would be pretty like tight in a weird way like it's a weird relationship between slave and master like slave owner in this in these cases like it's fucking bizarre but jupiter evans was like Jefferson said that his earliest memory that he had is of Jupiter Evans, like carrying him up a hill um, on a family trip. And so I imagine that this is somebody who he like he was his friend, like his his childhood friend. Um, but in a weird way, Jupiter Evans was like his forced friend, you know, and that's such a weird fucking dynamic that like when you look at it, it's just like, yeah, you were Jefferson's friend. But how did Jupiter feel about this? You know, like he's forced into all this shit. Like, and so is it his choice to be your friend? Would he want to be your friend? Like he's forced into all this shit. So is it really like his choice? Um, but yeah, like his his death was super hard on Jefferson. Like you said, he did take that long trip. He had to step away for a while. Um, but it's just such a weird relationship and a weird dichotomy between like slaver and slave master it's fucking bizarre i still am like what the f what a weird fucking situation to be in yeah and um th this oddity about jefferson is further reflected by his extremely intimate relationship with sally Hem hemmings excuse me um this is a woman he has six children with and throughout their relationship, she remains a slave. Yep. Um, I, I find that to be odd. Yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sally Hemings comes from um, Thomas Jefferson's wife's family uh, during like because of her father's death and the estate. He inherits uh, the Hemings family um, and after his wife martha passes away sally kind of becomes like i i can't remember the word that that's used because it's not a word that i see too often but they they ba like she he, she's basically just like his wife machine but like without really being his wife in a weird way like he doesn't ever marry her he does but he has like this really deep intimate relationship with her he does have six kids four of who end up living to adulthood and two of whom uh are freed by jefferson later on um and something like i watched a documentary about women slaves on Mont on monticello and a lot of like their stories and their lifestyles um and sally hemmings is like the one that's talked about the most and there were several slaves that like on jefferson's plantation that like Jefferson kept really detailed documentation of his slaves. He, like, marriages that weren't, like, legal um, in, like, a state case, but he kept track of all that shit. Like, he knew everybody, and so, like, there are super detailed records of everything that happened on his plantations, relationships, people. And, like, his relationship with Sally Hemings is something that a lot of people find this huge controversy about because, like— what Thomas Jefferson had a relationship with a slave, but there's a lot of people who had these relationships with their slaves. Like there are also a lot of people who raped their slaves. Um, 
I would not be surprised if Thomas Jefferson was one of them and if things just were not documented. Because, I mean, why would you document in your stuff like, hey, I raped slave blah, blah, blah. Like, you would never put that down because it's such a horrific act. But it was such a common thing that people did that, of course, like, there are so, like, I, I believe that I genuinely don't know if this is true. So take it with a grain of salt. But I heard that when people would visit Thomas Jefferson's plantation, they would make comments about how much his slaves looked like him. And that's something to think about. Like, and how many people there are that are direct, like direct descendants of Thomas Jefferson, like I believe, and their slaves, like I believe that the number is in like the tens of thousands of people who are direct descendants of Thomas Jefferson and his slaves. Like, that's a lot of fucking people, man, to be, like, related to him and that large of a group. And it makes sense. I mean, he owned over 600 slaves during his lifetime. But, like, his relationship with Sally Hemings is something that a lot of people criticize him for. And especially with his, like, like condemnation of slaves, like... How can you still be okay with all this stuff? You know? I think everybody from who's listened to that can take their own, um, with their own conclusion as to whether or not uh, he should be further criticized. Um, I, I still find it uh, misfortunate that history decides to usually reflect all of the wonders of Jefferson, the intelligence of Jeff Jefferson, the uh, the, the hard work, the inspiration, innovation, the legal mind that he represented, the you know, the, the the revolutionary, the rebel, and so on. Um, uh, but at the same time, they fail in the first, shall we say, opening paragraphs of the description of the person to say, yeah. <clears throat> also slaver, um, yeah. also person who fathered children from his slaves. Um, because I think then this will perhaps shine a slightly different light uh, upon the person who is considered to be a founding father. Yeah, it's challenging. You know, like it, it, something that you and I t had talked about after we finished our recording a couple of weeks ago was like just those feelings of how many extra like clicks we have to do how much extra research we have to do to find out what shouldn't be secrets about these people what should just be known like why is it that we have to bury it so deep like with robert warpole with the the c company like that whole situation like why did i have to go so far to learn about this company and the horrible things that they've done uh when you could also just say that he profited off of selling slaves like you could just say that it's not something that is going to be controversial it's just something that is true he did that there's nothing false there's nothing like he profited off of selling slaves and but it becomes controversial when it's not highlighted because later on if you're in an, in an arena where you're talking about these things there's always going to be at least one person who like us click that extra click yeah. found out what the South Sea Company was actually yeah. doing and will confront somebody and say, yeah, but one minute, Walpole was a slaver. Yeah. And then there's going to be an argument about it. Yeah. It's going to become controversial, but it need not have been. And uh, I think this is what we're getting at, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like if it wouldn't be controversial if we just talked about it. Like if we had already been talking about this stuff and if I had already learned all this stuff and if everybody else had already learned this stuff when we were kids, like in school – like, there wouldn't be this feeling of, well, you're wrong. Nuh uh. Like, I didn't learn that. Like, because that's probably, you probably didn't learn that. You didn't do the extra digging that you do have to do to understand these people. Like, you didn't do what, unfortunately, should have been done, which was teach you all these things, you know? Like, in, in school, that should have been done. Um, Without blaming the students uh, unnecessarily, of course. Yeah, like I'm not in this ca case, I'm not blaming the students. I'm blaming the schools like the school is at fault for not teaching the students these things. It is solely the responsibility of the school to be teaching your student like their students the things that are required in life to like, I don't know, be a decent human being. And I feel like understanding 
slavery and how it was conducted and how we look at the founders in these glorified lights, how it shouldn't be done like this, how they've done these horrible things. If we look at, at it in those perspectives, we wouldn't be having such heated arguments about, well, uh-uh, like, no, he didn't have all these slaves. He wasn't that bad to his slaves. Like, yeah, he he did all these things. We could just talk about it. We should just talk about it. Like, mm. and it shouldn't be controversial. It should just be okay to be talking about it. And this is also why when we talk about institutionalized racism and the fact that it still exists is because we perpetuate these racist elements by continuing to hide the fact that so many of the characters we revere in our nation's histories uh, were some of the worst, <laughs> I suppose, criminals with yeah. regards to you know, these particular horrific acts. Absolutely. Um, bring it out. Let's see what the you know these people really were. Okay, they did good things. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Of course they did. However, um, they were not good people, and not yeah. all of the things that they did were good. We need to highlight that, and then we can start to um, say at some point our institutions are cleansing themselves. Yeah, it's just. We, we need to talk about it. It's something to be talked about. The more that we, like, just dig that dirt up, man. Like, I want to know what's underneath. Like, and everybody should know what's underneath. Like, we shouldn't be hiding it so far and hiding it so deep underground that nobody's going to know about this stuff. Like, it, I just hate that so often I feel like I, the more that I learn, the more that I feel like I didn't learn, if that makes sense. Like, that I didn't learn everything that I should have learned. I didn't learn the full story. I didn't learn the important parts of it, man. <laughs> like the bits that really I feel like would have mattered and would have impacted me as an individual when I was a lot younger and would have helped me understand not to be like when I was younger, such an asshole to other people. Like, because there's so much growth that an individual can do in a time but, like if you would have just given me that information when I was younger, and if you would have given everybody that information when we were younger, maybe not everybody would be such an asshole to everybody else. Like we would have more empathy and understanding for one another because we are like, like when you're younger, you learn about slavery and you're like, whoa, I can't believe that we did that to another, like that we did that to people, like to women, children. Like you look around a classroom when you're young and you're like, people like me, were slaves doing involuntary work like holy cow like what an impact that has on you like yeah it's being sold like a false set of goods you know it's it's fucking horrible and i still am like we're still going through that circle i mean especially now with there are a lot more states in, in america right now that are like going through a lot of challenges with their like students with teaching students and their curriculums like there's a lot more weird leniency for parents to step in and be like no you can't teach my student this so you have to change your curriculum for my child only and it's like no that's not how this works like if that's how you want to do it you should just homeschool your kid if you can't do that then just fucking be fine like just shut up like really it's a free education like there's, they, these teachers are already struggling. You're making their job way harder by doing shit like that. Like, they're not going to make a new fucking plan for your child because you don't want to learn about slavery or about the Holocaust. You know, like, fuck you. Grow up if you don't want your kid to learn about that. It's so, like, that's such a childish thing. It's such a childish thing. Yeah, and um, I mean, we, we will talk about this uh, as well much, much later on in our series, because critical race theory indeed is something which comes about um, uh, after, I think, the 60s and 70s. Um, and so and this is very much now in topic um, in yeah. the USA in certain states, too. And I have a feeling you're alluding to this to a, to a certain extent. So you know, yeah, absolutely. We, we're going to come back to these <laughs> themes. Yeah. And, that in itself is quite horrific that something which happened you know events which unfolded over 200 years ago um, are still in some ways being revisited today um, and some people would consider us revisionists with regards to history and even though what we are relaying here 
uh, is essentially the truth, even though it's hidden away. It's yeah. uh, the, these are the history books with two or three layers of dust on them. <laughs> uh, yeah, but... you got to blow them a little bit <sighs> <sighs> like a bunch of dust flies out. <laughs> yeah, that that is the the additional click, as it yeah. were. Um, <laughs> but yeah. All right. Um, before we get to the rating, which obviously because we're talking about a U.S. president, this is your pleasure yeah. um, is there anything else you'd like to mention with regards to mr jefferson um just kind of flipping through my book a little bit i don't know i feel like we did a good job covering him i mean yeah. big like for as much as we got i mean dude was the dude did a lot you know like we we had to skip over so much of what the guy did i mean he was governor governor in virginia for a time he traveled to uh, France and was like um, he was a trade delegate and he ended up being a U the U.S. minister, replacing Benjamin Franklin. Um, and then when he came back, he was secretary of state for George Washington. Like he this dude did a lot. He also did not a lot of good stuff. So, you know, like there's there's so much to talk about with him, but like. I mean, if you it, like you said earlier, if you really are interested in learning more about Jefferson, please do your own research. Like there's only so much that two individuals can teach you and tell you in like the hour and a half ish that we're here. Like it's it's not it's not possible, you know, like you have and that's all that should always be the case is always do your own research like if you ever have questions, do your own research, learn more about things. And even if you don't have questions about things, you should probably still do some research on the things that you feel comfortable about, because it's probably not true. Like you're going to find out things about the things that you think are true that are not going to be comfortable. Um, and that's genuinely the beauty of learning and of like educating yourself is getting to those places of being uncomfortable and then kind of just being like, OK, I can grow from this spot. I can move on from this spot. And and at least you know, um, instead of continuing to preach, like, the wrong shit for, like, ever, you know? There are some people who do live in that bubble of ignorance that will continue to preach those, like, weird things that they learned when they were children that they will never Google or never look up with the amazing technology that we have nowadays. Like, I mean, God, I can't tell you how often I'm, like, thinking of a th stupid thing and I'm just like, all right, let me just Google that real quick and see if I'm thinking if that's true. And half the time it's not true. So like, I'm glad that I take those opportunities to learn more. So I genuinely encourage everybody who's interested in learning more about Jefferson to take some time to like, even just watch like a documentary about the guy. Cause there are some really great documentaries out there that I found. So yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's important also to, to to highlight the points that you mentioned, which he essentially did before he became president um, to learn a bit more about the individual, the person, his some of his principles. Uh, I mean, for example, Jefferson was against central banks um, and he wanted uh, the states to have uh, individual control over fiscal policy. So, you know, there are even though we were critical of him or I was critical of him earlier on with regards to his sort of business acumen when he came up with um, you know, the, the act that he did uh, in 1807. But um, you know, this element of the, the central bank, uh, it's something that I can understand. So therefore, yeah. he's not completely ignorant of financial issues. Um, but it does require going into a bit more detail and trying to understand a bit more exactly why he held these these yeah. thoughts. And even uh, later yeah. on, like with the National Bank, he does end up making a settlement with Alexander Hamilton to create the National Bank, which in trade, he gets to move like the capital of the United States to um, what is now Washington, D.C., and he names it Washington, D.C., um, and he's also the first president to be inaugurated at the in Washington, D.C., at the new White House as well. So, like, the, Thomas Jefferson is around for a very pivotal time. He did a lot of great things, like, at times. He's very much remembered for all these other, th like, a lot of his great things. But I feel like it's just so worth talking about a lot of his shortcomings, um, 
which I feel as I should always play a big, like it personally play a big role in my score for the guy. Like, because like, I hate how often I like these people are rated at such a high rate because like, it's just like the Passover, like, no, they did all these things and it's fine because they were in their time or like they get passes because a lot of the stuff that they did is before they were president. But a lot of the stuff that Thomas Jefferson did during his presidency, I would say are not good things. Like, and a lot of, and I feel like that's what we really do our ratings on is their time in offices. What did they do in office? And the Louisiana purchase is kind of neat. Like, yeah, Western expansion. I'm not super for that, but past that, it gets to like you get the it, the lead up to the British War, like the War of 1812 is going to happen past his presidency but he directly like is involved in the lead up to that happening um what else did he do in his presidency like he just like and that's also part of it is like there's not a lot that he really did and so i feel like my score is just gonna be uh pretty low so you've I'm, you've you've created this huge background now justifying how you're gonna yeah you know, spank this person further down the line um what, what we're saying here, what we're saying, Aiden. It's going to be a 12. <laughs> oh, man. It's be a 12. That's even lower than Robert Walpole. Uh, really? Is, yeah, I gave him 13, man. Oh, uh, nice. Cool. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Now, now, now we're competing, aren't we, for different things now, aren't we? We're, I we're guess beating, so. Uh, yeah, I'm okay, let me, let, me the... enter, let me enter this officially now into the score. So um, he rated even lower than John Adams. Wow. Yeah, I, I had to go back to my John Adams bit, but I did like I did a little bit of my reading on John Adams and I was I still feel like there's enough about John Adams that is more redeeming during his presidency to make him better than Jefferson. And especially with the lead up of so much that's going to happen because of Jefferson and the things that he did in office, like this his presidency leads to su- like super big issues like his presidency will lead to the civil war eventually with like the expansion of states and also the um, prohibition of importing slaves into the americas which genuinely like does create this big profit of slaves in the south in particular because there are so many more slaves in the south and so you're going to see that divide deepen between the north and the south as a direct correlation uh, Western expansion with Virgin, the Louisiana Purchase, like he's the treatment of in Native Americans from here on out is just going to be like directly impacted by all these things. And so, yeah, his score is going to be low because he sets up all these like the next few presidents to do some really horrible stuff, um, which probably means that the next few presidents are also going to be super low down as well because they're also going to be OK with so many horrible things. But I still feel comfortable with like a 12 like mm, sorry dude but at the same time fuck you <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely which basically um i think that's a that's probably a good place to to, to end um our discussion with regards yeah. to mr jefferson here our, so our next talk we, we return to uh, the uk and we Heck, are yeah. going to look at uh, spencer compton uh, the first Earl of Wilmington. I know you love talking about Earls and people <laughs> like that. Um, he, he was only uh, Prime Minister for a year and 137 Ooh. days. However, I'm sure that we're going to enjoy that discussion as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aidan, what can I say? Th- thank you very much. By the time we talk about Mr. Compton, um, the midterms will have taken place yeah um just a quick comment uh, or two on that from you so i read um online that some people were saying uh, yeah make sure you've got enough stuff stocked up because uh, if you're going to hit the streets around that time you never know what might happen it sounds as though some people are almost gearing themselves up to instigate some kind of a rebellion yeah i really don't know why like what people are thinking is gonna happen um i mean i'm going to go vote later today um I've registered for early voting and everything so like i'm just gonna go down but 
I mean, this is a really weird midterm to see happening. It's super fucking heated. Um, every it feels like every candidate is like just back and forth and back and forth and like I don't know it. I wouldn't necessarily like personally if you're in America. I don't think that you need to get stocked up for shit. Like you more than like like more likely than not you're gonna be fine. Um, there's not going to be anything crazy. There aren't going to be riots in the streets. Like, and if there are, it's probably not even going to be that fucking crazy. There are probably just going to be some peaceful protests. So chill out with that too. Like it, what's happening? Like it, I don't know. It's nothing crazy. It, it feels like just fucking weird propaganda spewing back and forth between the left and the right, just to try to hype things up and try to make things seem crazier than they actually are, which is always what happens, you know, like, I mean, I haven't seen too much like stuff about people needing to stock up for the midterms. So I'm like, what a weird fucking idea. Like, (laughs) just like, I mean, maybe if you're worried about COVID starting up again, like I did notice that in a lot of our stores, we are like, at least where I'm at, there's a lot less goods in our stores right now. Like, I don't know what's going on, but I remember like when COVID first happened, that was like, I don't know, it brought back like a weird, like PTSD kind of feeling of just like, oh, fuck, here we go again. Like, that was kind of scary. Um, But I mean, don't don't like stock up, don't buy guns, don't go crazy like nothing's gonna happen it's like it'll be two years and then like things will be fine again like it's always like this every single two years it's like this you know what i mean like i feel like in 2020 everybody was like "Ah!" and i mean there was an insurrection in 2021 so fuck maybe anything could fucking happen you're right zach fuck maybe i need to start (laughs) stocking up (laughs) anything could happen no, I'm kidding. I feel like everything's going to be fine. I'm I'm okay. not too worried. Okay. Well, hopefully that's the case. And uh, yeah. perhaps then at some point, uh, b- b- democracy and uh, mutual respect will prevail. Uh, time will tell. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you, Frost. Aiden, thank you very much as always. Um, yeah. To, yeah. Thank yeah, you, What Zach. can I say? See you next time. To Absolutely. And a uh, mic. and a mic.